are going to be discussing uh, treatment of uh, lung cancer, breast cancer, head and neck tumors, GI tract, uh, malignancy. But today we will discuss the vocabulary, thesaurus, you know, uh, terms that were coined and, or imported not very recently. We changed um, our understanding of uh, tumor biology, and our pathologist presented me with a slide that uh, show that uh, show very clearly um, uh, what does make tumor different. I mean, sometimes tumors are large and uh, nice, sometimes small and very aggressive. But not everything depends on tumor size. Not everything depends on the size of metastatic lymph nodes. You know, it depends on the uh, doubling period, tumor proliferation, and sometimes at 30 days, sometimes in doubling period, uh, maybe up to 50 to 40 years, and patients, not, not all patients, you know, develop metastasis. And at the Pathology Congress, one of the leading um, um, uh, tumors is uh, um, birds, rabbits, and the fence. You know, it turns out that they are the turtle uh, tumors. And this patient will never ever develop clinically significant metastasis. Okay, 3% of adults uh, with small lesions or tumors of kidneys, uh, thyroid, one half of men over 60 with of small tumors of the prostate and in such a small country as Finland where screening works so well and PCA screening showed colossal growth of incidence but it did not affect mortality at all because these tumors are not clinically significant mm. and we must not forget that one third of women age 40, 49 with small breast uh, cancers in reality, of course, we treat them. We don't, but we don't understand who these women are, and we have, but we have markers um, uh, to be guided by in terms of uh, good prognosis. And of course, you know, like again, turtles, rabbits, or uh, hares. And early diagnosis and screening here, you know, reduces the um, mortality rate, plus uh, birds. And it's a very short doubling period. These tumors are very aggressive that require the most, uh, the state of the art uh, treatment. And melanoma falls into this category because before 2011, everything was it's very sad, and the doubling period was very short. And now I have like a neck request. Those who remain in the audience, please use your cell phones and let's vote. Let's vote. So basically, it's not that. Let's take a look at the situation in our country, in our world, uh, concerning uh, availability of a checkpoint inhibitors. In, please enter, enter your responses in mobi.pod. Have you succeeded? Mobi.vote. And you see, you know, at the same screen. Do you have any experience of dealing with checkpoint inhibitors? Yes, no. One, yes. Two, no. Please vote. 
and we'll see uh, what the situation is uh, regarding immunotherapy is all about. Uh, let's take a look at the screen and I'm going to encourage you do that go ahead and do it. it's great because if I ask this question last year do you know a number of doctors oncologists who have already the experience of using immunotherapy would be very small now one half of all doctors oncologists uh, gain this kind of experience by using checkpoint in him. And what about Kazakhstan? I'll elaborate on that. Checkpoint inhibitor. Yes, we started working already with checkpoint inhibitors. Not as actively as um, here in Russia. We are both. You uh, to do that. Uh, but you are the ones who gain uh, the greatest experience, uh, you and Europeans, and we, in fact, integrate this experience, or draw upon it, with consideration of our new uh, um, comprehensive um, plan. And now doctors in the future will be able to share their experience with you. Thank you very much. And next. Tour. That uh, was coined, and you know, we face with checkpoint inhibitors. As a matter of fact, it's a group of uh, anti tumor drugs that inhibit the checkpoint of immune response. We just already mentioned birds and patient with the melanoma. We had no drugs to treat. Uh, them other than carbazine. Look at this catastrophic survival rate. And what? And look at the changes um, regarding uh, terbolizumab. And uh, here, this treatment, you know, uh, by virtue of this treatment, patients control their disease. Um, actually, petrolizumab in a combination with uh, low doses of uh, nizolizumab was used. Uh, mecha ac action mechanism, mechanism of actions of the therapy. Yeah, we basically um, make an impact on the um, cancer cell, depending on toxicity, you know, um, the, um, an activation takes place and tumor uh, cancer cell stops uh, dividing, multiplying. I've heard an expression at the international conference, and I like it. Let's assume, imagine that we are drivers, and we try, and we have problems with fuel, and despite that, we try to accelerate, to push accelerator with no avail, and uh, we touch break and lymphocytes in fact in uh, attack cancer but you know as well as surrounding tissue and of course Boris already Afanasyev mentioned the most significant Nobel Prize you know, awarded uh, recently uh, was for uh, discovering and the tumor therapy that in fact suppresses and then uh, down immune regulation. And over 20 indications I already know for checkpoint inhibitors. And of course, these checkpoint inhibitors learn on the immune system to fight malignancies and uh, um, preclude. Uh, cancer cells from escaping from immune control. Look at this table. Yes, we know we have anti-CD, anti-PD, anti-CD. Look at this fantastic selection of drugs. 
the bladder the tumors may be treated. And the patients just passed away. Whereas immunotherapy, you know, improves uh, their prognosis, it changes ide ideology of tumor. Look at number of recommendations uh, for nivolumab. It was already mentioned today in a setting of um, classical Hodgkin lymphoma. Not speaking of various solid tumors, I actually counted 16 um, indications for PDL inhibitors. And of course, if we are to discuss our own experience, you know, it, you know, we should understand that observation studies um, must be at scale. And, you know, basically, there is an experience accumulated, not just ex accumulated, gained, but also presented at international venues. A man, pa male patient, was resistant, and he had uh, metastasis uh, and um, HPV infection was present. And tentralizumab therapy, lembrolizumab therapy, in fact, improved um, um, lung capacity, functional capacity, and how uh, to use this therapy, you know, whether we have to discontinue only uh, in case of poor tolerability. Please took your device, take your devices, uh, open the movie, that vote, and let's vote. Uh, whether we use in our practice, not, I don't mention the ones, specific questions, specific aside, in those maybe mm, uh, lung cancer patient, uh, and actually at all other sites. PDL expression, do you measure PDL1 expression? The majority of the audience, two thirds of our attendees, answered yes. And in some cases, it's a matter of paramount importance. Because if, you know, that's a new term appeared in our language, in our theater, a checkpoint immune response uh, and IPD. And we will have like a special session uh, moderated by. Svetlana Pratsenko in on Saturday. And so, but what's the problem here? What should we pay attention to? Um, we got together, you know, the German Pathology Society got together in an attempt to harmonize uh, the uh, result of this PDL expression. It's 23, 28. The most important conclusion they came into those were the blueprint print. Yes, the cells with PDL expression are very challenging. Okay, and head and neck uh, tumors also require special terminology, like a combined scale of PDL expression. It's a combined positive score, CPS, mm. number of uh, macrophages, lymphocytes, uh, the proportion of those, and all tumorous cells with PDL1 surface expression. And now we have two actual scales tumor positive score in combined. One. And another question, please answer. Do you actually uh, measure level in your patient of microsatellite instability? And do you uh, 
institutions have this capability or you refer your patients to elsewhere. Do we have in the database that micro satellite instability? No, we cannot. We see it on the screen, but we cannot upload it. Try. That's okay. In the meantime, raise your hand uh, those who uh, measure microsatellite instability in patients. Nonetheless, why do we have to do this test? And uh, no doubts about that. It's actually, you know, like uh, increased um, likelihood of um, mutation with l suppressed ability of DNA reparation, mm -hmm. yeah, which leads to accumulation of errors and occurrence of new microsatellite repeats. And we heard this term, this vocabulary. It's an important prognostic predictive uh, marker. Uh, in colorectal cancer, the patient uh, with a high level of uh, 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 biomarkers have poor prognosis. And that's it. Oftentimes, it's a situation, a common situation, when we choose a new adjuvant therapy. And that level of instability, you know, tell tells us that we must not uh, prescribe chemotherapy uh, because prognosis is favorable, is good. No, basically, again, the same allegory, turtle-like turtle, turtle -like tumors. They're crawling, not flying. And metastatic forms. And of course, there's an indication for adjuvant uh, inhibitor, checkpoint inhibitors as a new adjuvant therapy. Yeah, it may be immunohistochemistry and molecular genetic too. Another term, mutation load that in fact broke into our informational space. We of course download a lot of uh, data from the internet. It's a number of mutations uh, in one uh, megabase of one uh, coding uh, genome. There is a low, middle and a high mutational load. Why is it so very much important? It's a marker uh, that used as a prognostic uh, factor, and, and more, even more importantly, it does not depend. TMB doesn't depend on PDL expression, but it correlates with a uh, uh, rate of response to immunotherapy. In fact, um, tumors with high T. Um, they must be treated accordingly. Team B. Okay. When we s it's a, a non a small cell lung cancer, and again, team PDL expression assessed by immunohistochemistry, and team B assessed by next generation sequencing and GS. And of course, you know, this patient population responded to therapy much better as opposed to those patients with low uh, values of this parameter. And uh, even in those patients, it, it was shown in one study, it was like a salvation path that was chosen in patients with high uh, mutation load versus low mutation load, red versus blue curve. Prognosis was much better. 
Alexei, you know, made a brilliant presentation. He put an emphasis on uh, treatment uh, and uh, uh, efficacy evaluation system. It pertains to chemotherapy, targeted therapy, and especially immunotherapy. And even such a term was used, you know, uh, dualism. Um, of action takes a special approach to treatment. That's why special systems have been developed to assess efficacy of um, treatment. Uh, and you can familiarize yourself with this system. You know, this information has been published fairly recently. There are, you know, some, you know, versions, version 1.1, etc. But that's a classification uh, or treatment assessment. You know, it became a part of our clinical practice. Hyperprogressive is a paradoxical reaction uh, and for shape of uh, rapid progression of disease. And of course, we discussed it already. And if we are um, to discuss terminology, so we have to discuss it together. Hyperprogression, what do we mean by that? We've seen this uh, table already. Yeah, we analyzed it already. Yeah. What are the criteria of hyperprogression? You know, 100% growth or it's 50% growth. Um, we have to evaluate uh, like a mass volume of uh, tumor. Again, those are the different assessment criteria. And it depends on uh, localization site. You know, it's like a 10% in a small cell lung cancer and in a neck, head and neck tumor, and 29% of cases. Pseudo progression, temporary uh, uh, increase of uh, tumor size. You know, but uh, without uh, modifying therapy, changing, don't uh, rush. Uh, watch and follow. Wait and watch. Our goal is disease stabilization. And um, if, unless it's like a visceral crisis, the patient should uh, be kept on the same treatment, especially as far as, far as immunotherapy is concerned. Pseudo progression. You know, Alexei actually went in detail. Another um, interesting subject, and but very few people, you know, ever encountered it. Uh, but you know, may, many professional just. It. It's abscopal effect, the systemic effect of local treatment. Um, the most important thing is to, it's actually the therapeutic effect occurs at different sites. It, you know, it's about pathogenesis um, uh, that in, in comprises various mechanisms. It increases activity of antigen presenting uh, cells, uh, in, including but not limited to um, TNF alpha. Abscopal effect, you know, and you know, people develop um, a protocol, you know, like a connotation of uh, rectal cancer, abscopal. And the patient receives the combination treatment followed by uh, radiation treatment um, to um, lesions like in the liver or elsewhere. And then, you know, they continued a radiation therapy and reinforced it with immunotherapy. But the majority of patients progressed. And, and some of those who achieve stabilization in yellow, orange, this patient definitely improved uh, the life expectancy. So immunotherapy in a combination of uh, radiation therapy uh, improved, improved the response. In other term, a immune-mediated adverse 
events. Basically, it's a damage to um, tissues uh, that are not the target of immune therapy. Any organ uh, is at risk. Whenever, of course, uh, we have to be um, very judicious and then uh, as immune suppressive therapy we have to use corticosteroids but what became a part of our clinical plan so we all discuss multidisciplinary teams but there is such a term as associated cardiologists those who have experience of managing our cancer patient you know associated dermatologists those uh, who follow up patients uh, colorectal patient and lung cancer patient you know associated ophthalmologists you know appeared on the horizon because you know checkpoint inhibitors may uh, trigger that uh, uh, damage to the eye the, any organ may suffer and neurologists should combine efforts with us and the endocrinologist more important those who, who work with this medications know that you know um aware of immunological parameters to be monitored and the major rule we have to follow you know we have to prescribe right drug the right time based on the multidisciplinary patient oriented etc approach it's a comprehensive approach that is based on all kind of treatment like surgery uh, radiation therapy immunotherapy this all is detailed um, provided in our laws what do we mean by multidisciplinary team? It's a patient-centered approach. <laughs> the new term that uh, became a part of our pra practice. Of course, rehabilitation should start upon diagnosis. What else is important? The patient should, in fact, uh, um, receive information from us, not from the Google doctor, Dr. Google. You know, and the terminology. Uh, you know, it's so relevant. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go four, go together. And that's the founder of uh, local domestic oncology, Nikolai Petrov. You know, uh, surgery is not a comprehensive science or technique. You know, basically, you know, we have to take care of um, uh, personality of our patient, not just try to treat the disease. Thank you for your attention.